My name is Jesus Enriquez, and we also have Miranda Davis from the Senior Medicare Patrol Program. We educate beneficiaries, professionals, anybody in the community who's in touch with somebody with Medicare about how to protect, detect, and report Medicare fraud through education, through presentations, community events, and these uh, engagements as well. So with that in mind, we have the logo right here. We have a presentation on the screen. It reads the SMP program, protect yourself from healthcare fraud. We do have a logo, Illinois SMP. And then we also as well have a website, IllinoisMP.org. So without further ado, we have the second slide here. So the SMP is a statewide program. So that is, we work in collaboration with 12 agencies in the state of Illinois, helping seniors in different areas. But our program is managed by H Options. H Options happens to be agency number 13 in the state of Illinois. So we help them with social services so they live independently. So the SMP program is also a national program too as well. It's been existing for almost 26 years. I can't believe it's been 26 years, but believe me, every year there's always uh, some sort of accomplishment. So like I mentioned before, the program empowers people like you to protect, detect, and report fraud. The ACL, which stands for Administration for Community Living, provides funding to the SMP programs in the 50 states. So like I said before, it's a national program. Wherever you go in the US, rest assured there will be a unit to prevent fraud. The ACL and the SMP program work in tandem with the US Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Justice to fight Medicare fraud. So when they do any prosecutions or any uh, legal actions or uh, they send units to arrest fraudsters, the Department of Justice and Health and Human Services collaborate together. We refer cases to them and they are the ones who determine if it's fraudulent or not. The most important thing take away here is to report a problem just so you protect your own benefits. So that's, this is who we are. And then what topics are we covering today? So we are defining the meaning behind the terms, healthcare fraud versus what an error actually means. We also discuss the importance of reporting fraud and how your community could be affected. We review examples of potential healthcare fraud. And we're gonna review COVID-19 scam trends because believe me, we're still seeing those happening in the community. I know we have vaccinations and that's great, but there's a lot of uh, scandals going on too with sites that are selling or offering fake vaccines. So we also have time for questions. And again, I'll stop the recording in that section. So you feel free to chime in and ask questions. However, this presentation is a dynamic style. With that being said, we're gonna do four questions. And if you wanna put in the chat box or unmute yourself and answer the question, then you're free to do that. So definition of potential healthcare fraud. It's, a, it's billing for a service you never receive. It's billing for something different what you have received. It's billing for something that was not medically necessary. You didn't need a back brace, but you got it anyways. Billing for the same thing twice or other billing in discrepancy. So again, anything that doesn't make sense in your somebody notice through Medicare, that could be a, a problem, an error or fraud. So with that in mind, what are the billing errors? Billing errors are a common human mistake. Accidentally entering the wrong name or information, for example, Mary Sue versus Mary Sue II. It might not seem too apparent of an error, but if we added the second at the end of it, that can have repercussions. The person might not even get the bill or the statement. And then the, the bill might go into collections. If it's an error or human error and not fraud, work with your clinic to try to solve the problem. Now, that's an error. And now that we have that, that we know a little bit about what an error is and what fraud really entails, we have the first question here. The definition of 
and I leave a space. Uh, the definition of is when somebody intentionally, I highlighted that, deceives or makes misrepresentations to obtain money or property of any healthcare benefit program. Is it A for fraud or B for error? And feel free to use the chat box too, or you can just say aloud if you, if you like. Okay, I have I have one res two responses from Fry, and uh, we'll reveal the answer. So the answer for this is Fry. So you are correct. The answer is Fry because an error is considered without intentions or unintentional, and can be easily fixed with the help of Medicare. Fry is an intentional act of billing for services not provided services not medically necessary or billing for the same thing twice. So we don't wanna call everything fraudulent. Sometimes, a lot of times it's an error and it requires you to ask your clinic first to rule out any error. And sometimes it might be clear cut fraud. So we will see that in, in just one sec, in just one minute. So another question I have, question two. Billing errors, this is a statement, will always indicate a doctor's or supplier intent to commit fraud. You think it's true, A, or you think it's B for false? What do you think? Again, feel free to answer through the chat box too. So we got false. And I'm going to flip this slide so you can see that answer. So in contrast, the correct answer is false because it's false, it's very possible that billing errors happen through the Medicare without intention of fraud. Medicare processes so many claims, making beneficiaries in Medicare susceptible to mistakes. So again, it's very common that errors happen and they are not necessarily fraud. They, they are human acts of mistakes. So if that's the case, a provider will be more willing to help you fix the problem, calling or contacting Medicare or sending paperwork. So in other words, fraudsters will never wanna help you. How much money is lost? That's this question here. It's also another question for you. How much money do you think is lost every year due to fraud and abuse? You think it's A, five to 10 million? You think it's B, 25 to 125 million? or you think C, 10 to 20 billion, or finally B, 60 to $100 billion. So A, B, C, or D. So we got a C, we got a B. Anybody picking the D as in Daniel? So we'll see that answer. So the answer for this question, and we have a graphic here saying in 2017, Medicare cost $591 billion, but that amount $60 billion was lost to fraud. The answer is $60 billion. In 2017, over $60 billion was lost to Medicare fraud, beating out any expenses on budgets of Homeland Security, NIH, medical research, college Pell Grants, NASA, and, and, and among others. So think about what you couldn't done during this year where like uh, medical investigation or research, you know, with this global pandemic, 60, $60 billion couldn't be more helpful. However, every year this money is lost. So a lot of this money is gone. There's no, uh, way to recover all the money, but some recoveries are possible. And if you wanna find out more information about how much money is lost this year and how many money is recovered, you can check the SMP research.org. That is a national library of senior Medicare patrol. All the information is free right there and you can look it up right there too. So that's why we do this program. That's why we require all Medicare beneficiaries to report issues. And better yet though, we want to prevent them from 
from this, we want to prevent identity theft, medical theft from happening to them to begin with. Now, uh, we have a video right here. And this video is describing one example of the most common scams that are happening through Medicare. This is a durable medical equipment scam. This is a short video. It's about one and a half minutes. If you're in pain, a free back or neck brace sounds like a good deal. But it's really part of a multi-million dollar scam by many different companies that are ripping taxpayers off. Pam Zekman investigates this new scam that we're all paying for. I realized, oops, I shouldn't have done that. Donald gave out his social security number over the phone to someone he thought was from Medicare. Then he received calls about ordering braces, calls like this. You may qualify for a knee or back brace at little to no cost to you. Do you need a brace? No, I'm fine. I don't need a brace. But Medicare still paid more than $3,000 to a medical supply company for five braces that he didn't need and never received. No, I'm sorry. I did not order any. Braces. Over the course of four weeks, Mabel Fowler received 10 braces from five companies. Back braces, arm braces, leg braces, braces for every limb. Did you order any of these things? No. But Medicare has already paid more than $4,000 for the braces. All this begs the question, why didn't Medicare suspect something was wrong before approving payment for all these braces for just one person in four weeks? Currently, the uh, medical supplies phone scams are the biggest one in the state and across the country. I feel violated is what I feel. Med and this is happening through many decades. This is not exclusively of one time only. This is happening through, I would say, 20 years 15, 20 years, so it's just such a problem. And that happens when people is trying to offer a free device in exchange of your medical number. That's truly a scam. And we're gonna see a video right here. I'm gonna open this browser window. And this is in today's show with the uh, agent of the uh, Office of Inspector General sharing some things about what you need to know, how to protect yourself from being a victim of scam. So I'm going to show you this window right now. I'm gonna play this video. And this video, this is a advertisement, but it will play shortly. So I, I must add that even though there's vaccinations going on, we might get later on boosters that might also become an issue when somebody unidentified is trying to contact you or trying to send you a text and prompt you to get vaccinated and they ask for your social or any other information. Get her appointment. It was making me crazy. So I took to the internet. I got my first shot by TurboVax. Citizen led sites like TurboVax posting available appointments in New York City, while websites like vaccinehunter.org connect people to social groups for how to score leftover shots. Some sites sending you texts or email alerts about availability and when it's your turn. Countless people crediting vaccine websites and social media for helping them secure a shot. We wanted to build something to help everyone navigate this process in a much easier way. While these sites and resources can be helpful, officials say be careful. When you have a lot of non-standard processes, it's an area right for fraudsters to exploit. Nanette Day is an assistant special agent in charge with the Department of Health and Human Services. How big of a concern is this for you? We're already seeing complaints coming in where people are being charged even to make an appointment for the vaccine. There is no legitimate process that requires you to pay for the vaccine or to pay for a spot in order to get the vaccine. Her office, along with other government agencies, have already looked into more than 96,000 potentially malicious COVID-19 websites. Like this one, spoofing vaccine maker Moderna's website, allegedly selling vaccines. At a quick glance, it seems like the real deal, but look closely and you can see Moderna is spelled wrong. The website has been disabled. The biggest concern, social media and messages that appear to come from people you know. Here's how a scheme could go. I get a contact from a friend of mine who I don't realize their account has been hacked. And this friend says, hey, I was able to get a leftover vaccine. I just had to pay $200 to this guy. 
contact him and give him your information. Day says any unsolicited contact could be a red flag, so call and confirm in real life. Signing up for a vaccine does require some personal information to be entered. What are some pieces of information you should never be entering on a website to secure a vaccine? You should never be entering your credit card. That's the very first thing. You shouldn't be ever entering things like what's your mother's maiden name, those types of security question information. And you shouldn't be giving your social security account number either. Another tip, make sure the web address doesn't have a dot with two letters at the very end, like dot M-E. That's Montenegro. We've already seen domains from other countries coming in saying that they're registering people for vaccination appointments in the United States. And that's, that's not true. That's not true. Depending on how you signed up, don't click on links in texts or in emails. Instead, go to the websites themselves and steer clear of anyone asking you to make an appointment for a medical exam to get the vaccine. Tips to get you vaccinated the right way and keep your personal information safe. And get this, the special agent in charge told us about a recent case in Connecticut where someone with no ID just showed up at a home to administer a vaccine. Do not fall for that. Call your local authorities right away if that happens to you. While there have been some cases of public agencies going door to door to give shots, that would be well established and reported in your local media. It's not happening randomly. And one more note, don't forget. And then, uh, so here's one of the most, I would say it's one of the most powerful videos. It's very helpful to understand how this is happening, where it's being originated, who is doing this. So it's important to understand that in order to get a COVID vaccine, it has to be approved to the Illinois Department of Health and um, it needs to be a legitimate site. It cannot be anybody just going and saying, okay, I can get you the shot, give me your social security or your medical number. So that's something to keep in mind. So with that, we're do, we have the next slide here. And these are things that you can do to protect yourself. So Miranda, are you on the other end of the line? I am. Thanks so much for showing those two videos. Super informative. I'm here. I think you might be on mute, Jesus. No, I'm not on mute. Oh, okay. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying go ahead. this is the mission of our program. Yeah, so our mission is to protect, detect, and report. For those of you who did not get a fair introduction of me, I am Miranda Davis. I am the Illinois SMP specialist. I'm just going to quickly list um, my contact information in the chat box really quick as I continue to present. There you go. All right, so the first step is to protect yourself from fraud. So what do we mean when we talk about protection? The first thing is to educate yourself on Medicare fraud. That means showing up to Zoom presentations such as the one that you're in. Great, sorry about that. Um, you definitely wanna protect your Medicare card and social security number. Use a personal healthcare journal to record all of your doctor's visits and services. Really, really quickly, we did just get the updated personal healthcare journals. I'm really excited to be able to ship those off to folks who need them. Um, another step in protecting yourself is to report suspicious activity via the Illinois SMP if you are here in Illinois. So that is what protection looks like. Here are some things that you don't want to do when protecting yourself. You do not want to give away your Medicare card, number, Social Security card, or number to anyone except your doctor or people you know should have it. And people you know should have it can mean um, some folks that you work really, really closely with. Um, if you are a senior on the line or you have a caregiver, folks like that, okay? Um, you do not want to accept medical supplies or services from door-to-door -door salesmen or someone calling over the phone. I know the door-to-door -door salesmen for people seem really strange, but it does happen. You do not want to allow anyone except for your doctor or other Medicare, Medicare providers to review or recommend um, medical services for you. Um, these are just some steps to protect. For any reason, if you have some missteps and you fail to protect yourself, is the world over? 
Probably not, right? So the second step in our mission is to detect. So what detection looks like is reading your Medicare summary notice or explanation of benefits um, from your private insurance company. Some different things you want to watch out for are services or equipment that you did not receive, but they're still showing up on your summary notice, meaning that you could be billed for those things. Services or equipment that were not ordered by your provider. So that's your personal care physician, your PCP, um, people you work with, right? Um, other things you want to watch out for are billing for the same thing or piece of equipment twice. Other billing errors, such as your name is wrong, um, your address, um, maybe the last couple digits and in some numbers that you recognize that might be off. So these are detections. Um, if any of you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Medicare summary notices, Medicare summary notices are mailed quarterly. So that's once every three months. You can also request a Medicare summary notice by calling 1-800-MEDICARE. And if you're anything like me, you do not like paper and you can view them electronically by going to mymedicare.gov. Alrighty. So why is it important to report fraud? After all, they're taking money from Medicare and Medicaid. They're not taking it out of my pocket, Miranda. I Why should I care? <laughs> so one of the reasons why it's important to report fraud is that they are taking money out of your pocket, right? If you consider yourself a taxpayer, as well as billions of other taxpayer dollars, um, they're going to waste each year due to Medicare and Medicaid fraud. So when equipment is sent fraudulently to you or to um, anybody that you're caring for and you notice it and it's not ordered by um, that person's doctor or your physician, it has a potential to harm your health. Why do I say it could harm your health? Because it's possible that Medicare does not approve a payment because it looks like something that you already have or a service that you already receive. So it's definitely fair to say that um, Medicare benefits could be used up as well. So it's really important to report that for that reason. Um, another thing is um, if you think there may be a billing or a service error by your provider, um, we encourage you all to just call the billing hotline number of that provider or supplier to resolve the error as quickly as possible because as you heard earlier by Jesus is that we don't want everything to sound like it's fraud and we don't want you to just assume uh, without going through the process of correction. Um, so if a provider will not explain or correct the error and you suspect that there may be fraud, you can definitely give us a call. For those who cannot see the presentation, I'll just read off our number. It's 1-800-699-9043. And that is how you can contact us directly. Again, it's the 800 number, but you will be um, speaking to me, actually. You'll be talking to me. So that's really good to know. So if you need medical supplies or equipment, our overall, mes overall message, other than talking um, about protect, detect, and report, we really want you to work with your doctor, right? Um, so if you need medical supplies or equipment, you and your doctor makes that decision. Your doctor knows all of your healthcare needs, um, and you only want to give your number to your trusted provider. Now, what does this mean with the rise of telehealth? I don't know who's calling me anymore. I don't know what this Zoom thing, are they violating HIPAA, should I trust, right? No one should be calling you unsolicited unless you know um, that you're looking forward to a call by your PCP or anything like that. So only give your Medicare number to your trusted provider. And it's very likely that your trusted doctor will not be asking for your Medicare number in most cases, right? All right, so your Medicare enrolled doctor will write, an order of services for you when it is medically necessary, okay? It's not when you see something really cool or fancy on a commercial and you call that hotline number up and you're like, I want the power wheelchair because I qualify for it. You definitely want to work with your provider. So I'm just going to give it right back over to Jesus to go over the COVID-19 current scam trends. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat box.
Thanks. Thank you so very much, Miranda. So this is a, a mission statement and it's also important how you always have to go to the doctor. Do not assume that anybody calling you is your doctor. That's the worst mistake. And that's one thing that you need to be aware of that your doctor should be identified and is not asking for social or Medicare number. So with that in mind, we have the COVID-19 current scam trends. So what are those? So how is fraud happening right now? Scams related to COVID are increasing, as we know. Scammers are targeting older adults and those with serious long-term health conditions. Frosters are attempting to build Medicare for sham testing, treatments related to COVID, and again, fake vaccine shots too. Scams are happening through unsolicited phone calls, emails, home visits, text messaging. So anything that entails communication to an individual is being used, but they are doing cold calling and things that are strictly prohibited. There's also social media ads and internet offerings as well. And how can you prevent this issue to begin with? Do not give out your medical number to anybody other than your doctor or any clinic or healthcare provider that is treating you. The only exemption in this rule is that if you are about to get your COVID shot in a certified uh, site by the Department of Public Health, and they're asking you that they need your medical number or they even need your social security number in case you don't have your medical card to build your insurance so you don't have to pay anything. That is the only exemption. More than that, there's no exemptions. So protect your Medicare card number and treat your Medicare card like a credit card. In other words, you don't want somebody to get a hold of your credit card and bill anything they want. The Medicare card is the same thing, even though they don't have a social security number anymore. Never provide your Medicare number to anybody contact you, contacting you unsolicited. Be cautious of anybody coming to your door because they might be offering free COVID testing, treatment, supplies, or like the video we saw right in today's show, they might even um, offering you vaccination on site, but they are not, might not even have any badge or they might not have any identification. And again, for, for instance, one, one sort of example here is speaking in Cook County Health Department, for example, they are offering homebound vaccination program but you have to call them to make that appointment. So they just don't call you out of nowhere. So these are the three things that you also have to keep in mind. Do not click on links from sources you don't know because they can put your device at risk, including your computer and your smartphone. Be cautious when purchasing medical supplies from unverified sources, sources that you don't know, including online ads and email and phone solicitations. Ignore online offers for vaccines, especially in social media. If you see these ads, please ignore them because they might more than likely will ask you for your social insurance or Medicare information, and you know that there will be a scam. Now, Medicare and COVID-19. So Medicare per BS and boy is the medical insurance that you use for your physical exams every year, covers COVID-19 testing after February 4, 2020. Medicare covers all hospitalizations as long as you have a diagnosis from COVID-19 from your primary care doctor. Now also Medicare has telehealth services to help you uh, access your healthcare without leaving your house or your apartment. And Medicare covers the COVID-19 vaccine at no cost to you. Recently, the Office of Inspector General and the Department of Justice released a statement to providers to please don't charge these out of pocket to anybody. In other words, they should charge, charge this to their insurance or to a common fund if they are uninsured. However, it's still happening in Illinois. If it happens, obviously you can report it to the Department of Health because you shouldn't not be getting billed anything for your COVID and even Medicare will cover it for you. Now, for Medicare coverage questions that you may have, contact the Senior Insurance Assistance Program, 1-800-252-8966. This is a group of folks that are educating people 
Medicare options choices and questions. They are funded by the government too, and they are in Illinois. So that's a statewide Illinois support for uh, Medicare counseling. I'm gonna type the number in the chat box. Oh, thank you, Miranda. So that's the number that you can call anytime and they can connect you one-on-one -on -one to get explanation if you have any Medicare question or you need any assistance with changing plans or enrollment in Medicare. Now, uh, once the COVID-19 vaccine is available to you, you will need two doses for to be effective. When you receive the first dose, please remember to make an appointment for the second dose. In cases Pfizer or Moderna, Johnson & Johnson is only one. State governments in Illinois are handling distribution. Illinois Department of Health is handling the distribution of the vaccine. Uh, the website that we want to share with you that you should always have, keep in mind, keep it in the bookmarks in your browser or anywhere in your phone is coronavirus.illinois.gov. So coronavirus.illinois.gov is a certified website by the state of Illinois with all the information that you need to know. CDC.gov also nationally has information about COVID-19 vaccines and other developments with the pandemic. And then also additionally, the government has enabled the platform vaccines.gov and vacunas.gov in Spanish to search and find a site near you. Even better, if you don't have access to a, to a computer or access to the internet, you can text get backs to 43 8829 for English to receive three, vac three vaccination sites in your phone within seconds. So that's good for somebody that doesn't have technological skills. They can text that to that number and get that information. You can also call the National COVID-19 Vaccination Assistance Hotline 1-800-232-0233. So these, are, these two are resources for people, again, that don't have access to a computer or they cannot schedule to a pharmacy. So these are very helpful options. So again, um, with that in mind, yeah, it's important for everybody to get vaccinated. The Illinois SMP sends email fraud alerts every other Monday. They have fraud-related articles, information about scams in Illinois and other states, and useful healthcare and fraud-related resources. Please share the fraud alert with colleagues, consumers, professionals in your area and visit their, web, their website to get more information. What I'm gonna do is gonna open this through my browser and I will be copying this link and I will put it in the chat box. So I'm having a little, um, okay. I, I was thinking I have an internet problems and now I'm, I'm fine. So I'm gonna put that in the chat box for you and press, feel free to click it when you see the page navigate through Illinois SMP alert. And then all you need to do is type your email address. You don't have to put your name or anything and click sign up and you'll start receiving those every other Monday. These are very helpful because we also have information about our next workshops. And again, an announcement I have to make. This June 24, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. we have in a Illinois statewide virtual resource fair. We have an attorney general from Illinois Social Security Administration, UNIFER. Miranda is explaining about the life of a case, how, how to file a case through our unit, and a lot of other helpful information. So again, June 24, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., we'll be sharing information with Fox Valley Public Library for sure. So with that, volunteers can present and provide information and a reach. Before the pandemic, we have a lot of volunteers helping us with community tabling and other things that are very helpful to disseminate information about this program. If, uh, volunteer at hoptions.org or you can call 1-800-699-9043. If you don't have time to volunteer though, you can also just spread the word about the SMP message. So what is the SMP message? Protect, detect and report Medicare fraud. Exactly. So, um, so this is one of the worships that we have though. However, in the future, when we might go in person by default possibly, we might be able to offer more sessions. So the second option that we offer is Medicare so my notice and how to step-by-step step what to look for in an itemized list. What are the things that you need to be mindful of? So that is that. And then in the third session we have 
um, types of scams, Medicare scams. In the last session, we have tips on how to prevent Medicare fraud for a total of four sessions. And again, this has a lot of insights and information about the scams and what you can do to protect yourself. Feel free to reach out to us for more information. You can contact the coordinator of the library if you have, if you want a copy of this, we'll be happy to give you the PowerPoint so you can have this uh, information in your hands. And lastly, there's a table here of numbers that are helpful to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording right now.